Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's so great to see so many of you here with us today. Um, in case you don't know who I am, I'd like to just briefly introduce myself. I'm Adam Waite, the Minister of Music here at Montview Boulevard Presbyterian Church. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, and uh, I've been the Minister of Music here since 2015, August of 2015, which means that I was fortunate enough to have eight wonderful years with our guest of honor today, Barbara Hulak. The reason why we're all gathered here today uh, to celebrate Barb's 46 and a half years of ministry to Montview Church. Um, it's really a wonderful thing to uh, uh, be able to spend this time with you all this afternoon reflecting on Barbara's work. Uh, we've had a, a committee that put, of course, we're Presbyterians, we have to put together a committee. So, of course, we put together a committee for uh, this afternoon's event, and I'd like to introduce one of the members of that committee. Uh, he just sat down, but he's about to get back up. Chin, Chin Tan, would you come up here, please? And. We have, some, we have some business to take care of because we know you all came for the um, prizes. I know it's really why you came here for the uh, prizes, so we've got some of that to take care of first. Hi everyone, good afternoon to you. Thank you for being here. So, because we're here to celebrate Bob, uh, to express our gratitude for her faithful service to God and uh, her gift to all of us, the body of Christ. We also want to express uh, recognition on Bob's longevity. Think back to 1977 when she first started a tenure here. Uh, this was when Star Wars first appeared on our cinema screens. Uh, somebody said Cooper Cinerama? This was before my time. <laughs> uh, Roots was the biggest hit on TV. Uh, it was the year Elvis Presley died at a grand old age of uh, 42. Um, it was also the year when Queen Elizabeth II celebrated her silver jubilee because uh, she went on, as you know, to serve for another 45 years. 46 and a half years. Amazing. Well, this is a visual representation. I hope many of you took part in this. Uh, each NMM uh, for each service that Bob has gifted us over the years. The number of Sunday morning, now let's hold our applause baby to us. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard, keep it in. The number of Sunday morning worship services that she has played in, 3,999. Thirteen extra Easter services, 93 Maundy Thursdays and Good Fridays, six Martins during Holy Week, only one even song. Who really should have had more? 418 funerals. Amazing. Weddings. A show of hands, how many of you have had your weddings played at by Bob? Uh, uh, 232 of them she's played over the years, weddings. And all this, just right here in Montview. This number, by the way, has been ratified with a certain Petra Hulat, with the Guinness Book of World Records. Let me give you the total number of uh, services she's played here. 4,762. Wow. 
Those of you who took part in the door quiz at the front, uh, guessing the number of M&Ms, uh, will you take a look at your post-it? And uh, anybody within, let's say, 100 of uh, 4,762, uh, how many of you are within 100? What is that? 4602 to 48, no, sorry, 4662 to 4862. Anyone? Well, come see me at the end of this presentation. Um, somebody asked uh, what the prize is. Oh, M&M's, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Chen. Uh, what some people may not know about Barbara is that um, she kept a little secret stash of M&Ms down in uh, the choir room that we would every once in a while get into uh, to just, you know, <clears throat> after a couple meetings, you need a little pick-me-up, just go down to the secret stash of M&Ms. Um, Chin, I think you're heading back up here, and we're going to introduce to you the rest of the committee that helped put uh, today's um, event together. And that I'd also then like to welcome to the stage Lorraine Alcott and Wendy Bauman, please. I had a lot of fun devising this quiz, and uh, thanks to Pete Hulak for a lot of the right answers. Um, so I'll start it off. Hopefully you, you've got your quiz and you've filled it out, and um, the reward is just integral. Just You'll just know how wise and knowledgeable you are about Barb. So I'll start off with number one. Barbara and her husband, Peter Hulak, met at Abington Presbyterian. Yes! We're going to switch up. We like the enthusiasm. Thank you. And I would just like to say, this is a very studious group. You all came in the door, got your quiz, and went to work. To heck with the food. So, amen to all of you. We are hard workers here at Montview. Number two, Barbara came from a musical family. Which instruments did her parents play? Her mother played piano and her father played the violin. Sorry about that little error there. Yeah, piano, not piano forte. Um, what does Barb affectionately call the organ at St. John's Cathedral? Big Bertha. Yeah. Name the Montview Ministers of Music Barb has worked with. Come on. <laughs> Jerry McCullum, John Kuzma, and Adam Waite. Yeah. Hey. Barbara earned a scholarship to Westminster Choir College, and she auditioned with Box Prelude Fugue in G Major. <laughs> what was Barbara's first job in Denver? Our Savior's Lutheran. Mm -hmm. ah. What was Barbara's first childhood gig? At age 11, she played for Sunday school. Yeah. What was Barb's audition piece for Montview? She didn't audition. <laughs> yes, you were that good. Yes. No audition. Um, who was Barb's first music teacher? It was not Boy George. It was Mr. George, the piano teacher. Where did Barbara attend undergraduate school? Westminster Choir, Westminster Choir College. <laughs> this is probably one of the most interesting things about Barbara. 
What did Barbara teach in addition to being our organist in her earlier years at Montview? An exercise class for women replete with childcare. <laughs> And did anyone who went in to get desserts, did you happen to notice the extra credit trivia question? How old was Adam Waite when Barbara started here in 1977? Not even around yet. <laughs> Not even a twinkle. Yeah. Thanks for taking Thank the quiz. All. This was fun. Uh, well, now that we got that out of the way. Um, thank you for uh, crafting that quiz, Wendy. That was a lot of fun. Um, I would, I, and, and to know that it was Big Bertha was the name. I'd forgotten. A couple of those others were serious possibilities. Um, at any rate, um, Barbara obviously uh, spent many, many years uh, just, gosh, you think about the level at which she played the organ here at Montview. Um, and we think about what she did here at Montview being so important to our congregation. But of course, what she did here at Montview and then beyond the walls of Montview was hugely important to the city of Denver and in, in general, uh, organ playing in Colorado and beyond. You know, there's not many music programs out, out there, Presbyterian music programs um, that are blessed to have an organist as fabulous as Barbara who uh, remained committed to her craft as she did for as many years as, um, as she did. Um, so in part of that recognition, we've got uh, two folks here from the uh, American Guild of Organists that would like to uh, talk about Barbara and present her with something, and that would be Diane Gallagher and Billy Busby Smith. So if you would come forward, we'd love to have you up here. Good afternoon. That Barbara is so special. Um, I tried to find out when Barbara first joined the Guild. And the Guild, uh, Barbara and I are both so young. Uh, the Guild didn't even have records for us way back. <laughs> but, um, but I do know that I moved here in 1987 and I got involved with the Guild right away, and Barbara was already part of that Guild. So today when I saw her, I asked her when she thought she first joined the Guild, and so she thought maybe in the 70s, and I said, do you remember that at that point, if a person joined the American Guild of Organists, we had to have two sponsors? So different from today. But it was, it was really quite, quite a thing to get into the Guild at that time. So within those years of her dedication to the Guild, um, Barbara has uh, contributed in numerous ways. And there are three words that come to my mind as I've um, thought about Barbara's contributions and as I visited with other um, colleagues. And, and so forth that have had the pleasure of, of being involved in music with her. Those words are always, now I know we're never supposed to use that word, but always is a word for Barbara, willing and collaborative. So always, um, always making things run smoothly, but she was behind the scenes, but everything ran smoothly. Barbara would sensitively add parts when she was accompanying, and so to her accompaniment that she's playing, she would add parts if she sensed that the choir needed a note here and there. <laughs> now, I, I didn't make this up, I talked to other people. <laughs> um, 
But the word that, that these other people used was always. Willing. Barbara was always willing to try new versions, new interpretations of compositions. She was willing, in 1998, to accompany Ars Nova in a premier uh, piece of music for the AGO National Convention held in Denver. And she was always, always, there's that word, she was always willing to do anything the Guild asked of her. Collaborative. I love that word. That's a new word now. We used to say a company, but now it's collaborative. Um, playing for events outside of Montview, whether that be for AGO or, or other events. I well remember when she uh, played for Advent recitals at Trinity United Methodist, and then also um, different events that AGO would host that she played for. And not only hosting, but times when she would share her demonstration skills on the organ and just hosting events here at Montview. And I think Billy will talk a little bit more about that. The last thing I want to say is that all of Barbara's contributions to music have been without any attention drawn to herself. AGO is so appreciative of Barbara, who has always been, always, a willing and humble collaborator. This is Billy Busby Smith, our Dean of the Organ Guild. Hi, thank you so much for having us both here. And I know time is limited. Uh, I second all of that. Uh, my, my example is, that we brought our scholarship students over here, and Barbara welcomed them. They were a little nervous about playing the organ in such a grand organ, and they all left feeling very proud of themselves and very competent. And those are important things for people like us, right? I do bring greetings from the National American Guild of Organists and our own Southwest region of the United States as well. As well, we have a, a certificate for you. I, I'm not, this is not an original work. This is, uh, this is uh, on commission from the AGO. It reads as follows. American Guild of Organists presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Barbara Hulak in recognition of active membership from 1975, that was a Diane Billy uh, date that we put together to current uh, on the 17th day of September 2023. The Denver Rocky Mountain chapter, Billy Busby Smith and Diane Gallagher. So thank you very much for everything you've done. Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing. It's always hard for me to, to you know, we're all musicians, it's always hard for us to leave the stage. When, when I first got the invitation, I put, out, I put out an email to board members and people who might know you. And the responses that I got back said many of the same things that, that Diane said. So that is from all of us here in Denver and all over the state of Colorado, and we hope to see even more of you starting with this retirement now. That's the one that clap. Thank you. Thank you, Diane, and thank you, Billy. And uh, that was a, what a lovely um, presentation from the AGO. Um, what you might not know about Barbara is that in addition to her incredible musical skills, she also has some very fine visual art skills as uh, she is quite an accomplished photographer. So I think it only makes sense then that uh, a visual uh, present be presented to her. And I'm not entirely sure who is here from the quilters, but I know uh, we've got some folks from the Montview quilt. Oh, excellent, both here. Come on up and we've got a, uh, something from the Montview Quilters for you, Barbara. Hi, 
Barbara. On behalf of the Mount View Quilting Group, we're just delighted to present you with a quilt to remind you of your years of service here and how grateful we are for you sharing your talents with us and well, your practice time on Monday mornings when we were down in the basement working. <laughs> so thank you, thank you for your talent um, and your expertise. It was just delightful. Um, I think also with COVID and quarantines and videos of you practicing, mm -hmm. We also got to see those dancing feet underneath oh, yes. us, underneath yes. us, <laughs> and we appreciated that too. Oh, thank you. Just a couple quick things, if I can remember. Um, first of all, we picked the colors and the pattern after your husband allowed us to do some reconnaissance in your house. <laughs> um, and so, not just the first floor, walked around, saw your colors, but one of the other things we observed was that and learned was that you yourself are a quilter. Mm -hmm. So, we'll be the second group to say, you know, in retirement, um, <laughs> you are invited to be a Montview quilter. And, and, you know, you can be in the church on Mondays, and that would be good. And no okay. to sing on those Right. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yes. thank you. I guess, Barbia, yeah, you might want to go back to your seat because there's a, a video now coming up. Yeah. Um, so yes, we have a video presentation that uh, Chin has put together. And uh, let's go ahead and watch this.
what a career. Um, Jim Kraft is here on behalf of our Westminster Choir. Uh, Jim is the president of the choir board this year. And uh, Jim would like to make a presentation uh, on behalf of the choir and tell you about how much Barb means to the choir. Absolutely. When are we going to put a railing up? And there can go stairs so, <laughs> before somebody falls. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to make some comments about uh, what Barb does sort of behind the scenes. And uh, Westminster Choir's relationship with Barb has extended well beyond what most members have experienced. Uh, we joined the entire congregation in celebrating her musicianship and leadership during worship. You may have noticed that the choir remained seated during the postlude because we love to hear her play. And uh, uh, that's something we're continuing to do with Yin Ying. Um, Barb spent hours selecting and practicing the music she played for the congregation. Uh, one thing that has always impressed me is that, their, that her repertoire was dynamic. She was always discovering new pieces that she shared with us. Uh, of course, Barb has been the accompanist for the choir. That means she helped the Minister of Music, Adam Waite, John Kuzma, and Jerry McCollum, as we just learned, <laughs> uh, prepare the choir for worship and co concerts. She is a wonderful accompanist. Among other things, that meant helping the choir learn new music by playing their parts. Anyone who's have tried to play open score will know the challenges presented by that. Uh, I certainly appreciate that. I've done a lot of piano playing and playing fugues and things like that, but trying to play open score is a different kind of a challenge. <laughs> um, she's been the keeper of the choir's library. As you can imagine, um, this is a huge responsibility. She made sure that every choir member had the music they needed for worship and concerts. We can be confident that our choir boxes contained the music for the rehearsal, worship service, or concert. And beyond that, uh, just her overall knowledge of what was in the library was very helpful in collaboration. I mean, relative newbie uh, Adam benefited from that, uh, I'm sure. Um, and she performed all of these duties with amazing grace. Barb was one of the nicest people I know. She always kept her cool even when we were confronted with challenges. <laughs> that helped us keep our composure. With Barb's retirement, she and Pete will, be, will have lots of spare time to travel. The choir wanted to help them with that. So we're presenting this gift. I'm told this is in, it, there, there's an envelope in here, but we thought it would t be tacky to hand her an, an envelope. So. <laughs> So anyway, this is for this is for Barb and Pete to uh, to travel with, and thank you again for your 46 plus years of service. We really appreciate you. Um, you can stay up here, Barb, but I, I still have some things I'd like to say. Um, and then uh, we're going to turn the microphone over to you, I believe. Yeah. Um, so um, I actually did not, when we said we had your final Sunday a couple weeks ago, I made sure to write those comments out. Now, these comments I'm about to say I have not written out. So... <clears throat> Um, but I just wanted to share a bit about um, when I first arrived here at Montview in 2015. And, um, you know, I uh, saw the job posted, uh, I guess it would have been January of 2015. And I thought, well, that looks like a really interesting church and I might be a good fit. And went through the initial audition process. And at a certain point, Paul Lingenfelter, who's here today, he was the chair of the search committee that called me, sent me the bios. There were short biographies, the bios of the other people on the search committee. And 
Barbara Hulak's name was on that bio, and she was a member of the search committee and also the organist, which I don't think Monfu's website was fully up to speed yet, so I did not know up until that moment that you were the organist here at Monfu, and so I was like, oh, she's the organist, let me read the bio. And I might be doing my math wrong here, but at that point it said, oh, Barbara Hulak has been the organist at Montview Boulevard Church for 37 years. And the first, the, literally the first thing that went through my mind was, oh no. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yes, yeah, she knows exactly. And, um, to apologies to other AGO members. But uh, sometimes when you have an organist who's been somewhere for as long as Barbara had been at that point, uh, they get a little stuck in their ways, or maybe they're, you know, you, you know, the politics of church, and you're like, and I thought, I really thought to myself, oh, this is gonna be what the search committee wants me to do, is like, we have to, our organist has been here for 37 years. <laughs> we need, we need, that's gonna be the first thing. So I was, a little, I was a little nervous going into the, the very first, and we, we had a meeting on Zoom. I think it was my first time on Zoom ever. Huh, how about that? <laughs> yeah. I was, I was back in New Jersey, and um, you all were, I think you were sitting down in your office, I believe, in, here in Denver. And the minute Barbara came on the screen, there was just something about her way of being. I was like, oh, okay. Maybe she doesn't have to be fired. <laughs> it felt good. It felt good. So um, we had an aud uh, continued the audition process, um, but I never really got to hear you play organ. I realized this the other day. I was like, oh, I never. They hired me. And I said yes without ever actually hearing you play the organ, which is, seems like it could have been a really um, missed opportunity on my part, but thankfully it all worked out because I finally did get to hear her play the organ on the, on the um, we, uh, at this time, and I'm sure we'll restart these someday, we, we stopped them because of COVID, but we used to do reading sessions, summer reading sessions, in which uh, conductors from across the area would come in and conduct a major work, and they invited me to come do the foray requiem, and, uh, which was a really nice, that was much nicer than like, oh, come and do when lilacs bloomed, and, or last bloomed the Hindemith. <laughs> like you guys, it was a nice softball for me. Just come do foray, it'd be great. And uh, we had 100 people, we were up here in Miller Center because the basement had flooded from the, all that, the, the rain and the hail and all that. Um, and then the second half of that reading session, we got to go upstairs to the loft and sing the entire Foray Requiem with Barbara on the organ. And um, I do play some organ myself, and I've played Foray Requiem before, and uh, I've worked with some other organists. And so I kind of had an expectation in my mind of what this should sound like, and Barbara blew it completely out of the water, in a good way, in a very good way. I had never heard an organist be that expressive with that piece. And I knew at that moment, I was like, I have to make her job at Montview as pleasant as possible because I want her around as long as she's willing to stay. <laughs> she's been here for 37 and a half years. How much longer could she possibly want to stay? I, like the whole thing flipped. Now I, gotta, now I really want her to stick around. And this is before we even started working together on, in choir rehearsals, and um, it is not hyperbole at all for me to say that you are one of the most fabulous musicians I've ever worked with in my life. And, uh, sorry, I thought I got this all out in your office the, uh, a year ago. Um, and um, I will always treasure the eight years we had of collaboration. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I'm still, it is such a gift. I know you didn't do it for me. That's how I think sometimes. <laughs> but it was such a gift to me to be able, I really thought that 
you were only going to be um, here for a couple of years and just see us through the transition. And the fact that you were willing to spend eight years working with this dude right here, I mean, it means, um, it made me value my musicianship more because I knew you were such a fabulous musician and the fact that you were willing to stick around and work with me for eight years made me think like, oh, I'm pretty good too. And, <laughs> um, and yeah, well, thank you. And um, I just loved every single minute of it. Gosh, I'm, I'm just really, truly, Barbara. Um, so thank you. Thank you for all you did. Thank you for saving my bacon so many times that first year. You wouldn't believe how many meetings we had in my office that first year. Anyone that, that said, oh, Adam, you did such a great job, you know, transitioning, taking the baton from John Kuzma, it was all thanks to Barb. I mean, she, she talked me out of so many corners and, <laughs> and landmines. She's like, no, let's do this instead. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. So I'm also very grateful for that. Um, and I'm also very happy, Barbara, to, so now I'll finally get to the announcing bit, that um, we requested uh, on behalf of the personnel committee and of Montview Boulevard uh, Presbyterian Church's session uh, that they uh, undertake a um, request from, I guess it officially came from personnel, and, um, and it has been unanimously voted yes, that um, uh, you are now going to become Montview Church's first ever organist emerita. So with that comes uh, practice rights. Now, now Yin Yang does get first choice now. <laughs> and she might, you know, you, we might kick your memory levels back a, 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 a few uh, 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 numbers on the, on the machine. Um, but it comes with practice rights. Yeah, yeah. And it comes with space in the church for you to keep some music and all that stuff. And of course, it always, and you know this already, that it comes with the invitation to come back to Montview and play from time to time. And I actually have a date I already want to talk to you about that I'll <laughs> text you early next week. So thank you very much, Barbara. Barbara Hulak, everyone. First of all, thank you to all of you who have been such a part of my musical journey over the years. For my, for Steve and Beth and Dave who endured, I don't know how many hours of <laughs> playing up in the, in the playpen, in the choir loft while mom practiced. <laughs> and likewise, at home with the piano, only you probably weren't quite so constrained. <laughs> anyway, um, a few thoughts and just kind of a general sense of how I got here. Montview, my journey there it began in 1971 when newly married Pete and I moved to Denver from the East Coast. I was newly graduated from Westminster Choir College, Pete from medical school, and we drove to begin Pete's residency or internship, actually, as it was called at St. Joe's Hospital. A visit to Montview 
and an intro to music, the Minister of Music, who was David McCormick, a graduate of Westminster Choir College. Um, and he offered me practice time on the organ, which was much appreciated, while I looked for a church job in the city. I also studied some with David McCormick and became organist at Our Savior's Lutheran Church at 9th and Corona for about a year or so, then auditioned for a position as assistant organist at St. John's Cathedral, um, which I took that position as assistant organist playing Sunday mornings, accompanying cathedral singers, which was a concert chorale um, with, first of all, Bob Finster as Minister of Music there, and then David Harris. Meanwhile, 1973, and Dave arrived on the scene. 1976, and Beth arrived on the scene. And um, at that point, I left St. John's and had practice time at Montview with kids in play pens, up in the choir loft, or Dave was going to, I think, Montview Preschool by that point. You can well imagine how, what it was like to practice, tend to a small <laughs> child in the play pen, and somehow we lived through it all. <laughs> January 1977. And Jerry um, McCullum was music minister, minister of music or whatever. His title was slightly different at that point. And he needed an accompanist for Westminster Choir. So that's when I began my time at Montview. Worked with Jerry. Worked with John Kuzma. Somewhere along the line, Eurosing, we that was with Jerry. We traveled to Europe, England, had a great time singing in various spots, even if there was no audience in at least one of them. <laughs> and then, yes, John came to Montview. Steve was born, and Thus, the playpen arrived, or stayed, I should say, in the choir loft. And poor Steve <laughs> was treated to all sorts of organ music as he slept in the loft. <laughs> um, John invited me to stay as choir accompanist because I believe at that point he was to do all of the job, playing, conducting, you name it. And I was grateful to be able to stay and continue to make music with Westminster Choir, with the congregation, and what a gift this has been to me to be part of this wonderful congregation to be able to make music with so many of you. I think of weddings, I think of memorial services. Used to be two or three weddings on a June weekend. Now it's not so much anymore. Anyway, thank you to my family for the, all their love and support, and to all of you for being such wonderful music collaborators and especially to Adam. Thank you.
right. Let's see. All right, let's pray. Bless, O oh God, our sister Barbara, this kind and gentle spirit who has been such a blessing to this community, this gifted music maker, note nudger, and pedal pusher who has for almost 50 years poured her heart into her craft with devotion, fidelity, and humility. A craft both solitary and shared, we have been the recipients of Barbara's alchemical magic. As she breathed life into dead notes on a page, filling the sanctuary and our hearts with exaltation and praise to you. As generations of families have marked their lives through baptisms and weddings, funerals and Sunday services, Barbara has accompanied them literally and spiritually. She has been the steady heartbeat of our worship life, the steadfast pulse of our community, and for her we give thanks, O God. We give thanks, too, for her family, for supporting her, and for sharing her with us. We thank you especially for Pete, her faithful page turner and life partner. We thank you for her place on this staff, for the ways she has supported and gently mentored our music ministers through the years, quietly working behind the scenes to make our music programs shine. And I thank you for my friend and colleague of 20 years, for her unfailing professionalism and reliability, for her patience with my lack of musical acumen, and for her wise counsel through the years. As she and Pete now turn a new page in their lives, we pray you shower them with blessing and grace. May they know in their hearts how grateful we are and how much we love them. And may the countless notes Barbara has lifted into our sanctuary air linger there just a bit longer, occasionally falling upon still appreciative ears, reminding us of the legacy of excellence she leaves behind and the immeasurable gift she has given us. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, thank you for being here today. Um, none of this happens without a lot of work behind the scenes, so if we could also thank all of you who were a part of this, would you join me in thanking all of them for making this possible? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Barbara, we love you very much. You all have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Thank you for being here. Okay.